When you think of enemies in Mario games, what is the first one that comes to mind? Goomba! No, not Goomba. Well, okay, maybe. But touching Goombas in every Mario game would be too simple. So today we are going to focus on the other most iconic Mario enemy by seeing how fast you can touch a Koopa in every Mario game, starting with the original Super Mario Bros on the NES. Alright, so all we need to do here is make our way through the early part of World 1-1 until we reach the first ever Koopa in a Super Mario game. Next we've got the Lost Levels and dang we almost touched a Koopa without even having to play the game. But yeah, this is a quick one. Now what I really want to know is what's going on with this red Koopa up here and why he's in prison. What crimes have you committed? On to Super Mario Bros. 2 now, and as I'm sure most of you already know, Mario 2 wasn't originally a Mario game, but instead a reskinned version of another game, Doki Doki Panic. So because all of the enemies in Mario 2 actually come from Doki Doki Panic, there are no Koopas in this game. But that being said, there were some visual adaptations made to better fit the Mario theme, including this Koopa shell you can pluck from the ground here. Alrighty, moving on to Super Mario Bros. 3, where there are definitely Koopas. So yeah, this is a pretty straightforward one. All we gotta do is head into World 1-1, then jump over this, then jump over this piranha plant to touch a Koopa. Next up is Super Mario Land on the Game Boy. And this game is special because not only are there Koopas, this is the only game where the Koopas explode. Phew, that was close. Next we've got Super Mario World, the Mario game with by far the most Koopas. Now for this game we've got two options for the first level, so let's try going left to start. Right away we can stomp on this little guy, which I guess is technically a Koopa, but is it really a Koopa without its shell? Probably. But regardless, let's check out the level on the right, where if we just run a bit to the right here, we reach the absolute Koopa touching gold mine. Alright, Super Mario Land 2. One thing I appreciate about this game compared to the first one is how they supersized everything, so it makes it a lot easier to see stuff. So let's go ahead and touch one of these big Koopas early on here. On to Super Mario 64. So you may have already noticed, but in this video I'm switching things up a little bit and not counting the intro cutscenes as part of the time for each game. I'm only starting the timer once we first gain control of Mario. And now that we have control, let's head into the castle and hop into bob on Battlefield. Okay, so if we head this way past these Goombas and up the bridge, I could have sworn there was a Koopa here, but that's okay. Instead, let's just instead let's just make our way up the mountain and chuck around old Uncle Mustachio up here to get the first star. Then we'll just hop back in so we can go ahead and touch this, or rather, get our head munched on by this big Koopa. Next up is Super Mario Sunshine. And one cool thing about this game that I always liked is all the new species they introduced. As a result though, some of the ones we're more used to seeing got left behind, but that doesn't mean there are no Koopas. We'll just need to round up some shines before we're able to find them though. So let's quickly speedrun what I believe are the 10 easiest shines in Super Mario Sunshine in the very early part of the game. Number one, spray the rainbow sherbet goop monster. Number two, take out Shadow Mario in the most optimal way possible so we can enter Bianco Hills and get the first shine there. After that, there's a bunch of shines we can get early on in Delfino Plaza. So we'll get the one hidden in the sand here. We'll go down this pipe and make it to the bottom of the slide. We'll swim to this island uh, just to say hello to this guy because, you know, he looked lonely and not because I thought there was a shine I could get here. Then we'll break some boxes a couple times before finally entering Gelato Beach. Here we can get a couple of shines inside the Sandcastle secret stage, then one more by spraying this purple plant blob thing to reveal its little secret hideout. Then back out in Delfino Plaza after getting chucked through a window for our 10th shine and also a concussion, all that's left to do is blast ourselves over to Pinna Park where we can finally say hello to the Koopas of this game. And apparently they say hello by electrocuting you. On to new Super Mario Bros, the first of what I like to call the bah, bah era of Koopas. Uh, anyways, we can find a Koopa early on here in World 1-1. 
And while we're at it, let's touch Koopas in the rest of the Ba Ba games. New Super Mario Bros. Wii, New Super Mario Bros. 2, and New Super Mario Bros. U, which also all have Koopas pretty early on in World 1-1. Next, we've got the Super Mario Galaxy games, which continue a trend for 3D Mario games of not having nearly as many Koopas. So after a few minutes of intro cutscenes, oh, uh, that's not good. Well, hopefully that doesn't become a problem later. Anyways, after the cutscenes, we'll need to progress a decent amount through the game before we can touch Koopas. So let's chase some rabbits, beat up a big baby, play some tennis with Octodad, uh, tickle a giant mama bee, become a master at surfing. Uh, that was the low battery's fault, I swear. Before finally blowing up a giant mech to unlock Space Junk Galaxy, where after being forced against our will to rescue a bunch of toads, we can eventually meet our first Koopas of the game. Mario Galaxy 2 is a pretty similar story. You would think there would be more Koopas with how many different galaxies there are in these games. But regardless, let's progress through the intro portion, beat up another big baby, spit some spiky balls at Grumpus McWumpus over here, and then keep progressing through the entire first world. All right, let's just go ahead and grab this. Oh, that's okay. We'll just get it on the next go around here. Oh, that's fine. You know what they say, third time's a char. Okay, got it. That was weird, um, how the star kept moving. Anyways, once we get to Bowser Jr.'s fiery tortilla, you'll notice some dry bones here, but I'm not gonna count those because I'm looking for a living, breathing Koopa. So we'll just quickly take care of this dragon boss here and... Uh-oh. Uh, that's okay. I am a professional speedrunner. I can handle this. I hope I have double A's. Okay, we're back. So yeah, let's just take care of this boss, then move on to world two, where we'll need to complete some advanced puzzles and force feed Yoshi some spicy peppers before finally reaching Cosmic Cove Galaxy, where we can touch a Koopa. On to Super Mario 3D Land, where Koopas are once again rare enemies, only showing up in four levels in this game. But luckily for us, one of those levels is World 1-2. So let's quickly make our way through and touch this first Koopa here. You know, I bet if I just time this perfectly, I can run through here without getting hit. Okay, on to Super Mario 3D World. In this game, we've got a bunch of Goombas and Cat Goombas and Rabbit Goombas, but no signs of Koopas anywhere, so we'll just speed run through World 1-1 onto World 1-2. Okay, if there are no Koopas here, then... All right, we're good. Now we've got Super Mario Odyssey, and this one is unique because there are no more Koopa enemies. There must have been some kind of peace treaty or something because we've still got Goombas, we've got frogs, we've got rabbits. But yeah, anyways, after bonking Mr. Rabbit on the head, then bonking Big Mama Rabbit in the face, we can make our way to Sand Kingdom, roll through some sandy hills and say hello to our first friendly Koopa. All right, Bowser's Fury. So it appears the Koopa Peace Treaty didn't last very long because we are back to having Koopa enemies in this one. In order to touch one though, they make you work for it a little bit. So we'll make our way through the intro part and then get to collecting some more cat shines. All right, here in the first area of the game, we've got a few different places we can explore. At one point, there's these boomerang bros, but I'm looking for a good old fashioned Koopa Troopa whenever possible. So let's collect five shines to unlock the next area. And also same thing with Goopy Bowser. I'm not gonna be counting that as touching a Koopa. One, he's not a Koopa Troopa. Two, he's got a thick layer of goop on him. So we might not even be touching him at all. So let's booty slam him and move on to the next section where we can ride Plessy over to our familiar friends. I mean enemies. Finally, we've got Super Mario Bros. Wonder. One thing I appreciate about Nintendo is how they've become much more accommodating to the uh, touching stuff in games quickly crowd by letting us skip cutscenes in their more recent games. Honestly, that's okay, because I'm sure nothing important or anything related to some kind of magical castle transfiguration is happening, so let's just skip through these. All right, here we are in World 1-1. No signs of Koopas so far, and oh, that's a nice looking flower. 
Anyways, let's keep searching for Koopas. On to World 1-2 now, where we'll just zoom by these very ordinary, non-musical piranha plants and carry on to World 1-3. I don't know why these ferrets are so scared of me. I'm just out here looking for some Koopas. Oh, and there we go. Oh. Okay, maybe they were right to be afraid. And for the final results, here's how long it takes to touch a Koopa in every Mario game, from slowest to fastest. Thanks so much for watching, and if you enjoy these kinds of videos, it would mean a lot if you subscribe. And if you'd like to support me further, you can find a link to my Patreon either on screen or in the description. Any support there would be greatly appreciated, and it'll help me continue to make these videos consistently moving forward. But that's enough for me, I'll catch you guys in the next one.